along, you soldiers, sailors, Marines, and Coast Guardsmen, to a meeting of the Chamber Music Society of Lower Basin Street. Calling the meeting to order is your chairman, Dr. Milton J. Cross, ably assisted by the Woodwinds, under the direction of Dr. Paul Laval. Lovers, the Chamber Music Society of Lower Basin Street has a patron. Putting up the dough for the Society's nefarious activities is the wealthy widow, Mrs. Lulu Van Grieveney. And in the front office discussing their new benefactor, we find the Society's handyman, Tchaikovsky Johnson, and your chairman, Dr. Milton J. Cross. <laughs> so, Tchaikovsky, Mrs. Van Grieveney gives me this check, and I... <laughs> Tchaikovsky, for shame. You haven't fed Toreador yet. Ah, Polly, what are you huh? What are you trying to do, starve my parrot? I forgot about him, Dr. Cross. Here you are, Toreador. Here's a bird, bird seed for you. Fly around the bottom of the cage. <laughs> mm, that bird's mama must have been frightened by a P-38. Tchaikovsky, I wish you'd take better care of Toreador. I've got a minute in a parrot talking contest, and I want him to win. Okay, I'll watch him. Say, Dr. Cross. After Mrs. Van Greenley gave you that check, well, then what happened? I paid all the society's obligations, including you. What did you do with your back salary? I took it home to my honey. Boy, when she saw that water dough, did her eyes pop out. They did? <laughs> yeah, one of them rolled under the dresser. <laughs> you know, Dr. Cross, you don't sound very happy about getting all that money. I'm not. You see, even though it's a gift, there are strings attached. That reminds me of the time I got a woman to put up 50 bucks to back an invention of mine. Invention? What did you ever invent? Invisible lead for loading transparent dice. <laughs> well, this woman wanted me to pay off, pay off an investment in kisses. The first month, we made $100. I gave her 10 kisses. The third month, we made $400. I gave her 40 kisses. The sixth month, we made $1,000. What happened then? My wife attached the profits. <laughs> What happened to... What, 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 what arrangement you got with Miss Van Grieven? Well, she has an equal say with me in running the society. Right now, she's on her way here with a Russian opera singer named Lawrence Tibetsky, a new protege of hers. <laughs> protege? Uh-oh, a singing gigolo. Never mind. Just get to work and clean up the office with your new vacuum cleaner. Uh, uh, get to work, get to work, get to work. Uh, that's it, Tolia Dog. Keep talking. I want you to win that contest. Boy, this show is a powerful vacuum cleaner. Dr. Cross, you don't have to worry about your parrot winning that contest. Why not? He's in the bag. Oh, for goodness <laughs> sake.
Smith. Oh, uh -oh. Mrs. Van Greenley has been drinking her hair tonic again. <laughs> Before she gets here, Dr. Cross, I want to give you some advice. You get along with her better if you treat her with more respect. After all, she's real society. Right out of who's who. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, throw me a chair. I'm pooped. <laughs> who's who? <laughs> she should be in what's this. Mildred, I thought you were coming up to my apartment the other night. I sent the butler and the maid out. <laughs> we would have been all alone. Mm, what do I want to be alone with you for? <laughs> yeah, you haven't been around much, have you? <laughs> Mrs. Van Greenley, I must repeat, our relationship is strictly business. Okay, dearie. Not going to be much fun that way. You know, you remind me of my... <laughs> you remind me of my sick husband, Clarence. Oh, he was shy, just like you. When we got married, one on our honeymoon, he went to Niagara Falls, and I went to the Brooklyn Navy Yard. <laughs> The Brooklyn Navy Yard. Certainly. I told you he was shy. <laughs> I wasn't going to waste a perfectly good honeymoon. <laughs> Say, Kitty, aren't you going to come up and see me sometime? Never. <laughs> this bun's playing hard to get. <laughs> Mrs. Van Greveney, business, remember? Now, about this uh, Lawrence Dubitsky you discovered, when can we hear him? Right now. He's waiting, waiting over there. Hey! Come over here, onion breath. <laughs> I am Lawrence Tibetsky, the great Russian samovar. Where did he get that accent? Mrs. Van Grievney, are you sure this man is Russian? Sure he's Russian. I can tell by the advances he makes. <laughs> brought me and Lawrence together. It was on Delancey Street. Da, I just stepped off the curb. And he just happened to step on my face. <laughs> uh, romantic, isn't it? I'm going to let him sing the lead in our opera. Well, that's all right, but can he sing? Tibetsky will give you sample. I shall sing you the rug song. I never heard of any rug song. How do you spell it? Rug. R-O-G-U-E, rug. <laughs> but, of course, I must have music. Okay, Maestro Laval. Rogues, we live as we trade ever kindly And regret we must bargain for gold Oh, friend, an ever-welcome hand we will extend To foes we have an ever-ready carbine Little more need be told. Beyond the dawn, we belong the pale dawn, making our home under the stars the night is born. Beyond the pain, seek us there in vain. Where the burning hills are us forever. I will, none can say me, be it gold, be it pearls, or a maid. Take heed, that is my creed, I take what I may please, and very often please what I have taken, the song of our rogue rules my Beyond the dawn, we belong the field on, making a home under the stars when I is born. Beyond the pain, because there in vain, where the burning hills guard us forever. 
You can drop that phony accent. I know you're Lawrence Tibbet. I've seen you at the Metropolitan enough. What's the idea? Well, Dr. Cross, you know, it's that woman. If she ever found out that I'm really Lawrence Tibbet, life would be unbearable. Why, every time I sang at the Met, she'd be there. Well, that's better than no audience. <laughs> uh, Mr. Tibbet, <laughs> I'm going to tell you who you are and end this farce, and then we won't have to put on any opera. Just a second, Dr. Milton Cross. Do the people at the Metropolitan know you're the chairman of this uh, louse lounge? Well, uh, uh, no. Well, if you keep my secret, I'll keep yours. All right, Tibbet, it's a deal. Here's my hand. Thanks. I'll give it back to you later. <laughs> what do we do now? Wait for Miss America of 192 to come back. Sit down here, Mr. Tibbet, and we listen to Maestro Laval play There's a Small Hotel. Tibbet, uh, Mrs. Van Grieven isn't here yet. If we can stall a little longer, we might not have to do that opera. Couldn't you sing a song to waste time? My singing is not a waste of time. Well, that's only one man's opinion. <laughs> now, if you could just... Uh, uh... I'm back! Say, 
Are you boys still beating your gums? Mrs. Van Grievene, please. I was just about to sing. What are you going to sing, honey? Bess, you is my woman now. I am? He said Bess, not mess. <laughs> Go ahead, Mr. Pelitsky, sing. Music lovers, Mrs. Lulu Van Grieveney presents Lawrence Tibetsky in The Barber of Seville. <laughs> the opera opens in Tibetsky's barber shop. The barber sings. Figaro, 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 Figaro. Come in, mother! <laughs> that was the Henry Aldrich of Harlem. The barber walks into the barber shop and starts shaving a customer. But his razor slips, and the barber slices off his wooden leg. Looking down and seeing that his wooden leg is gone, he sings the famous aria... I don't want to work without you, my baby. <laughs> Hearing the barber's song, the manicurist enters. Cigars, cigarettes, racing form. Cigars, cigarettes, racing form. That's the end of the first act. Now what? Tchaikovsky was at the door. Okay. Okay, I'll take it. This here letter just came for you, Dr. Cross. Hand mail already? It might be important. I'd better open it right away. Listen, everybody. It says, Dr. Cross, I've been listening to your program. Prepare to die. Your life isn't worth a plugged nickel. Signed, Anonymous. P.S. Guess who? <laughs> Some wise guy trying to frighten me. Well, I'm not afraid. <laughs>
Are you all right? Yes, but that guy wasn't fooling. He really shot at me. He's out to get me. What'll I do? How about private detectives? My second husband had a private detective trail me for three months. What happened? My third husband was a private detective. <laughs> broadcast of the Chamber Music Society of Lower Basin Street is a presentation of the Armed Forces Radio Service.